Hello everyone, Chad Franzen here, and welcome to the Kingdom Finance Show. Today we are going to reveal what you really need to know about the economy, the stock market, and real estate. And we're going to give you action steps to take right now to become a Kingdom Impact Investor. It's time to bring clarity out of chaos. Let's get started. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm your host, Chad Franzen, on behalf of Wealth Builders Investments, Authentic Council. We want to thank you for jumping on to today's program. And I want to wish everyone happy holidays, Merry Christmas as we wrap up 2023 and uh, reflect on the year that has been and also on the, the year that is upcoming for 2024. For those of you that are clients, thank you for the opportunity to serve you this year. And for those of you who are new, maybe you found us on Kingdom Finance Show or or through different platforms that we're associated with, uh, we want to welcome you. Um, so this particular uh, conversation we have once a month, and we do kind of a market update, economic update. Um, it's really designed for our clients, but it's also designed for those of you who maybe have just been following us. We're not currently working with you, but it's a way for you to get a little more inf insight into how we think and what we're doing when, when, on the concept of financial planning, investment management for our for our firm. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm going to be sharing some handouts today. I'll make those available here at the end of the webinar. And then also I have an offer um, that you can schedule. We, we do have a handful of one-on-one -on -one, uh, consultations uh, still available before we break for Christmas. And so just kind of instructions as we get started, if you're watching the webinar live, um, you can put your questions in the chat. Uh, there's a chat function there. And uh, I'll, um, I'm going to do my presentation. It's not going to be as long as months past, um, but I've got some good slides in there. I want to share what happened with the Federal Reserve yesterday and kind of what our, our thoughts are on that. So feel free to put your questions in the chat box. We'll get to a few of those. And then I went ahead and put the offer up there. There's an offer tab. And so Caleb and I and the team at Wealth Builders Investments, we um, have a schedule, a calendar schedule, uh, where whether you're a client or, or, or maybe just considering engaging us for, for financial planning services, um, we've got some time slots where you can schedule just a time to connect with us one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe you want to talk about um, your investment accounts for those of you that we, we work with you. Uh, maybe you just want to learn more about what we do. And so uh, there's a green box in that offer. Click on that. If that's of interest, that'll be there uh, the entire webinar. Uh, we'd, we'd love to connect with you one-on-one. -on -one. Well, hey, let's get started. Oh, we've got a good group for today's webinar. I'm going to share my slides and uh, I'm going to put the handouts um, I'll post those here at the end. So I'm probably going to go about 30 minutes. Um, I've actually been dealing with a, a raspy, raspy voice. So I'm going to try to conserve my voice a little bit and not go the full hour, but I'm going to cover um, some of our slides and then we'll do some Q and a as well. So let's, let's go ahead and get started and um, let me pull my slides up here. Great. Well, thanks again for being here. Again, if you don't know, our company is called Wealth Builders Investments and uh, our website, wealthbuilders.net. Um, our parent company is Authentic Council LLC. So either way, we're all one big company. We are an SEC registered investment advisor and um, you can find us online at wealthbuilders.net. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO and um, am a certified financial planner. Um, please note this presentation is for educational purposes only, um, and uh, we encourage you to consult with a financial planner or advisor for specific investment advice. Well, again, this is our economic update for December. This will be our last one uh, for 2023. And for those of you that do not know, um, our goal is to do this once a, once a month. And um, it's just really our way to give you an update on the markets from what we're seeing. <clears throat> All right. And uh, many of you already follow us, but 
Every Tuesday, we put out a new podcast on the Kingdom Finance Show. And um, we're on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you like to listen to podcasts. So you can um, you can search for that. You can also take a picture on your QR code there. Um, that'll take you um, to that. <clears throat> that is a great way uh, for those of you that are clients. It's a great way for you to stay um, up to date on what we're thinking uh, and how we're kind of viewing the world from a biblical worldview as investors. So again, we have new episodes every Tuesday. Please check us out on the Kingdom Finance Show. A lot of good content there, and we'll be having um, uh, more guests come on in 2024 uh, who are different types of investors, entrepreneurs that I'll start interviewing, which I'm really, really excited about there. So great program. Please follow us there. All right, let's jump in to the presentation again. Uh, the markets really leading up to this week had been getting very excited about the prospect of lower interest rates. And who in the room is not um, excited about interest rates going back down? Um, now, when the Federal Reserve changes their interest rate policy, they use this term called a pivot. And so the markets, I'm talking about the stock market and the bond market, I have both really, uh, even before Thanksgiving, we're really getting uh, very antsy, very excited about the, um, the news that they thought the Federal Reserve would communicate that rates were not going to go higher and that rates would be coming down. And so we've seen in the month of November, and even here in the first part of December, we have seen uh, stock market prices um, going up um, kind of across the board from small to mid to large cap technology. Um, there's some exceptions, um, energy uh, being one of those. But um, give you a little teaser here. I'm going to show you a chart. But historically, going back to 1970, when the Federal Reserve pivots and changes their interest rate policy, it's actually more common that that equities go down. And let me say that again, when, when the Fed changes to, to lowering interest rates, it does tend to lead, historically speaking, going back about 50 years, that stock market prices go down over the over the subsequent six month period uh, once the Fed starts to lower rates. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a minute. Now, coming into this month, significant rate cuts were already being priced into the market. So when you looked at um, stocks, when you looked at bonds, uh, the market was already anticipating several rate cuts in 2024. Now, the other, other thing, um, commodity prices have been in a major bear market. Um, oil prices are down some 25% in the last two months. Natural gas prices are down 35 to 40% in the last few months. So the bear market in commodity prices is telling us really that the recession is, is already here in a lot of parts of the economy, right? Um, so depending on what part of the economy you're looking at, when you see oil and gas prices going down 25, 30, 40 percent, that tells you that global demand is weak, right? Which is the definition of a recessionary period. Now, I don't mind lower oil prices. I drive a truck and it costs me a lot to fill up my, my truck at the pump. But we're talking about the economy here. So really what's happening is there are parts of the U.S. economy that we're talking about here, which are already in a recession. Another chart here I wanted to share is personal credit. And um, if you saw the news that came out after Black Friday and Thanksgiving and Cyber Monday and all the all the shopping, the um, I think it was like a 30 percent increase in in consumers that use the um, pay. You know, they have the pay now, pay later um, 
when you when you buy a lot of things online now. And the pay later uh, option went up, uh, I think, thirty something percent this uh, this this um, you know Christmas Christmas season Black Friday weekend <clears throat> with all the shopping. So as this chart shows, uh, this is a chart of personal interest payments. So if people do the pay later, if people do credit cards, um, revolving debt, that's what this red line is. And if you look since COVID, um, personal interest payments have gone up significantly, but really to all time highs. Now, when we talk about being um, in a recession and we see global demand weakening, the more consumers have higher amounts of debt, personal interest, right? Credit cards, um, that's more of their discretionary income that they don't have to buy other things. So again, that is a warning sign for us. I do think many parts of the economy are already in recession. We'll talk about what that means for us as investors here shortly. <clears throat> now, going into the Federal Reserve Board meeting, which happened on December the 13th. Now, we're recording this the day after on December 14th, um, this was what the markets were predicting. Um, so a, a lot of predictions, the, these three bigger um, black bar graphs, vast majority of probability was showing um, rate increases, you know, somewhere around one, uh, one to one and a half percent. Um, this was before uh, the Federal Reserve meeting. So again, what's happened is bond prices and stock prices have have already started, you know, baking the pie, you know, if you will, to, to say that, hey, oh, my gosh, they're going to stop raising rates. They're going to lower rates um, quickly. And that's going to help uh, consumers out with 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 debt, with mortgages, with what we call the velocity of money. Now, I mentioned this chart at the beginning. And, I'm, and I mentioned to you, I want to show you visually that going back to 1970, when the Federal Reserve has changed their interest rate policy, okay, and they have started lowering interest rates, okay, um, more times than not, the stock market goes down over the subsequent six months after the Fed pivots and starts lowering rates. So let me give you an example here. If you look at this blue line, this is the federal funds interest rate. Okay. And then what you see is that when the rates go down, like here in early 2000s, that blue line is going down. That's interest rates being reduced. You see the green line is the S&P 500. That's the stock market. It goes down also. Okay. And you also actually see that little light gray vertical bar. That is a recession. Now the, the same thing happened in, you know, 2006, 2008 period, the blue line interest rates go down, stock market goes down recession. <clears throat> you can go back even to uh, early nineties, 1993, you see interest rate policy, see that blue line going down and you see also there's a recession and the green line going down, stocks going down. So this, folks, is really textbook. Um, a lot of times we think, um, and understandably so, we think that when interest rates start to go back down, that now everything immediately goes back to, to normal to positive, to, to, to growth. That's actually not historically how it works. Now, what it does mean, it does mean that, that we're going to see some relief in the real estate market, hopefully, which will be positive on mortgage rates. But what remains to be seen is the prices of real estate, um, single family homes in many cities across the country have, have, uh, have weakened. Uh, we've seen prices come back down, um, 
but we still have inventory issues and there are still hot markets, uh, certain markets in Texas, Colorado, Florida, where there is a continual um, amount of buyers demand that are going to, that are going to keep prices um, kind of a floor on prices, if you will. Um, so, you know, what we can anticipate here, everyone is we can anticipate that, that the markets and I, in my opinion, uh, Chad's opinion, I think the stock market is going to roll over here after the first of the year. Um, I do think we're going to see lower rates, but I think we're going to see a pickup in stock market volatility. Now, what that will be good for is we can kind of pick some of the types of stocks that we want to invest in. There'll be some that we're going to prefer to be in versus we don't want to be in when interest rates are doing what we anticipate they're going to do in 2024. Now, let me share one other interesting stat that I pulled from some research. And we're talking about the stock market. We're talking about companies and, and really the health of companies as far as their overall financial well-being, if you were if you were measuring corporations and uh, how much risk they had for going bankrupt, um, what you see on this chart is what's called a, a Altman Z-score. And, and the main thing to know here is when this blue line is really high, it means a high percentage of corporations are healthy. When you look at their liquidity, their solvency, their leverage, uh, you know, just their overall, um, you know, their overall balance sheet income statement. Now look at this. Um, since 2021, we've seen a sharp decline in the health of a lot of corporations. And so for the first time ever, um, the, you know, this has reached below 10% where um, nine out of 10 companies are actually not that healthy when you when you look at their you know just their overall uh, profile as a company, so that leads us to some some concerns that just like consumers have higher amounts of debt, a lot of corporations are not as uh, financially healthy as they have been in you know say 10, 15 years ago. We also know, as we've talked about on this program earlier in the year, there's a lot of banks particularly regional banks that we believe have some major risk going into 2024 because a lot of them have um, <clears throat> commercial real estate on their balance sheet and they have um, they have them financed at rates that are going to come up for for refinancing. So that we think is going to lead um, to some continued problem with corporations but also with banks going into next year. This next chart here is one I've shown before. This is the manufacturing index. And the manufacturing index is, <clears throat> it really looks at, it scores the level of manufacturing activity that's going on in the United States. Now, the way you read this is, if the score is over 50, <clears throat> that is positive. That, um, that is expansion. If the score is under 50, that is contraction. And so um, in November, this, this ISM manufacturing, so new orders for manufacturing, it was at 46.7. So it's below 50. And this uh, is a is kind of an internal sign of the health of the overall economy, manufacturing, right? Um, this number has been below 50 for over a year now. And so it's been flashing recession for close to 14 months now. So what this means is that there are pieces of the economy that we believe, as I'm showing you here, are already in recession. So I don't think, and I'm going to share with you what the Fed said here next, this is part of the reason why the Federal Reserve in their comments this week, they're not overly optimistic about how well the, the economy is going to grow. And some of it is, is data such as what I'm sharing with you here.
Now, let me show you this chart, and then we're gonna, uh, I'm going to finish the slide presentation with talking about what the Federal Reserve said this week in relation to interest rates and um, give you a chart on that as well. Now, one of the things we talk about at Wealth Builders Investments is what we call financial gravity. And this chart, uh, statistically, you would call this reversion to the mean. And what you'll see here is this red line that kind of runs through the chart. Um, consider that, um, you know, that, that, is, that, that is the mean, okay? And so it's like bouncing a ball off of that red line. Asset prices go up, asset prices go down, whether that's gold, silver, real estate, commodity, stocks. <clears throat> now, going back 150 years almost, the um, asset prices always come back to this this baseline so it's what's called reversion or regression <clears throat> to the mean or, or the trend line <clears throat> so what you see here you see how high that purple line is the markets even after um the bear market of 2022 um you know last year the stocks were down quite a bit after a big rally in 2021 but you know this year they they have been pretty resilient um, primarily focusing on interest rate cuts but what we believe will happen is as we move into 2024 again every time the fed has pivoted we've seen stocks roll over and retrace down um, so this is just another chart that supports that so what you'll see here <clears throat> excuse me, um, is that that's really, we think that line, that purple line may not get all the way back to, to the mean, but we do think there's a lot of room that it can, it can ramp down. And that's going to create some buying opportunities for us as we move into 2024. <clears throat> okay. Well, let me finish here. Again, I'm going to keep the webinar a little shorter today uh, just to protect my voice. I'm going to, um, I've got uh, the Q&A box open, so feel free to put questions in there. <clears throat> and then um, also, if you want a one-on-one, -on -one, check the offer tab for us. Um, mission accomplished, question mark. Um, the Federal Reserve um, has announced that they are pivoting their interest rate policy. And so what the markets are really anticipating is that <clears throat> it's an all it's an all clear sign. And so what I wanted to do is just put my notes up here on the screen and you can have these in the handouts. Um, I'm not going to go through all these, but this is really a, a summary of what the Fed said <clears throat> this week, the last Fed meeting. They're going to leave rates unchanged. and um, most Fed officials see interest rate cuts up to three, <clears throat> expecting up to three interest rate cuts in 2024. And they see unemployment to be uh, around 4% by the end of next year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, point number six, you'll see that they don't expect the economy to grow that much. Now, those numbers are pretty small. 2.6% growth and 1.4% growth. That is not major growth. That's really right on the fringe of, you know, neutral, you know, and so it doesn't take much for, for these numbers to go negative. We've already seen a lot of points of that with manufacturing. Now, my last point that I wanted to put in here <clears throat> is that, the the stock market has priced in double the number of rate cuts in 2024 than what the fed came out and said they were planning to do so i believe uh the markets are overly optimistic it's kind of like an early santa claus rally for stocks um i think the markets have gotten a little bit ahead of themselves at the current values 
we are we are excited that rates are going to start coming down, but the market's expecting a little too much. And visually, this chart here is one that I pulled, and it really plots what the Federal Reserve is is the members uh, are planning to do as far as interest rate cuts. <clears throat> so you can kind of see that <clears throat> those yellow dots are where they anticipate being next year. So most likely three rate cuts next year and then another three going into 2025. <clears throat> now the downside here is the stock market's really anticipating that all the rate cuts for 25 and 24 are all going to happen in 2024. So I, I think, um, you know, I would probably be looking at taking some gains on some of my stock positions selectively here. Again, that's that's a personal personal plan decision. But I think this is going to be a, a drawn out uh, interest rate policy change. It's not going to happen all in March of next year. I did put in the handouts, and I'm going to go ahead and make those available. Um, let me go ahead and put those in. Um, some of our uh, thoughts on that. So I did put over in the in the chat box. There's now a handout column. You can go ahead and download these handouts. I'm not going to go through all of the detail on here, but I wanted to get it to you. This is just a, an article that was written by a chief economist that we follow. And I think this really, from a narrative standpoint, <clears throat> really summarizes our view uh, on what the Fed did this week. Uh, we would agree with, with this economist that we think it may be a little premature um, that they have won the battle here. And as we talked about earlier <clears throat> this year, we do think there is the potential for what's called double dip inflation. So we don't think the Fed should be too aggressive in lowering their interest rates because that could re reignite an inflation problem as we move into 2025. <laughs> so again, these are some of the points I wanted to cover, um, but I wanted you to have that summary on that. Inflation's not going away. It's going to continue to be with us, uh, particularly what we call core inflation. So when we think about investing, <laughs> we need to be mindful of that. We don't want to get over our skis uh, with our allocations. I actually think bonds will probably do pretty good in 2024. Um, I think certain parts of the stock market are going to do better than others, particularly quality, particularly dividend. And um, even as we talked about last month, what we call emerging emerging markets. So that's a good summary uh, of really today's webinar and kind of our thoughts. That's from one of the economists we follow. I wanted to share that with you. Be sure to click on the handouts uh, and you can get those. Again, let me wrap up with this. Here's some more points. Um, <clears throat> You know, the, the market had been down for three straight months. It had a had a solid month in November, uh, really anticipating all of these, uh, the news coming out with interest rates. Um, historically, the odds say that a soft landing is is easier to talk about than accomplish. Uh, going back to World War II, there's really only been one time when we've had a true soft landing, which was in 94, 95. Um, we think the potential is there for a soft landing, um, but we do anticipate inflation is, is going to stay with us. Um, I do think they're going to start lowering rates, but they're not going to lower them. Um, they're not going to lower them that fast. And what we want to be mindful of is there could be uh, a double dip inflation on that. So again, I know we're all super excited that rates are going to be coming down, but I do think we need to be cautious with that and be mindful as you're thinking about how to invest your money in real estate, how to invest your money in commodities and stocks and any number of, of financial, uh, financial assets. 
So we'll see. Right now, again, it's three interest rate cuts is what's predicted. But the market is kind of acting uh, like it's five or six. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, a couple of um, just kind of closing things. Uh, our January edition of this uh, economic outlook, <clears throat> I'm going to have uh, Mr. Billy Epperhart uh, on the webinar with us. And we're going to do an outlook for 2024. Uh, he and I, uh, I'll kind of interview him and we'll talk about our outlook for 2024. We'll talk specifically in the January webinar about what asset classes we are we are investing in, which ones we're avoiding. And Billy, uh, for those of you who know Billy, follow him. He'll also provide some very um, specific thoughts on the real estate market on that. So be on the lookout in your email uh, for that. That'll be our January uh, monthly edition of this. And we'll have Billy join us and um, we'll we'll get real specific. And for those of you that are clients, you're going to recognize a lot of the things we're talking about because you are invested in, in, the, in these asset classes. So we'll give you a specific update on a lot of those. Um, also, uh, for those of you who have asked us about cash management and interest rates, um, we do have um, limited supply of some different cash management investments. And so if you're looking for FDIC insured CDs or maybe you're looking for money market rates, um, reach out to us. You can email us. You can ask us about that on a phone call. Um, we are able to go out and kind of source the whole market or parts of the market at least and find different um, whether they're insured CDs or money markets. Here's just an example uh, of some of the different CD rates our team has found um, here recently on that. So you can definitely get your cash working uh, four and a half, five, five and a half percent type interest rates. So I would encourage you um, to look around on that with your local financial institutions or just reach out to us. Um, and we'll be happy to help you with that as well. Uh, we do have limited supply on that. Uh, but I want to just point that up as we wrap up. And then the um, phone consult link um, is in the in the chat. Um, so we've got some slots for next week. We'll be happy to connect with you, answer your personal questions before the Christmas holiday. And then we're going to take some time off and, and kind of wrap up things for the year as a firm and um, and spend time with family and Christmas. And then we'll we'll have more time uh, for meetings in January. And then, of course, we'll have our our big January kickoff webinar. This one um, we will go a full hour. We'll have Billy. And I think you will we'll really enjoy that. Well, let me uh, let me scoot over here to the questions. And again, please be sure to get the handouts. Um, kind of look through that. I know I went a little fast on that. And um, one of the questions is, is there a new pro values stock sheet? Yes. Thank you for that question. <coughs> we actually did just finish um, updating that. And so what we will do, um, I will make a note to have our marketing team go ahead and send that out as a follow up to this event. And so if you registered for this event, we'll send out the new uh, 2020. 24 uh, Pro Values Index. And what that is, for those of you that don't know, it's just our kind of top 30 list. 30 companies to promote that we believe are biblical values, 30 companies to, to boycott uh, that, that do not. And that goes, you know, that goes for investing, that goes for spending. But thank you for that question. And we'll be sure to get that. Uh, we actually just updated that in November. So thank you for that question. Um, I talked about the cash management, so I think I, I already answered that question. Um, yeah, we like money market funds, short-term CDs. Um, you can talk to your local bank where you live or connect with us, and we can try to help you with that. Um, we are kind of seeing a stock market rally um, through through the year end. I, I kind of call it a Santa Claus rally. Um, I do think it's short-lived. I think once we get into January, 
I think we'll see the market uh, roll over a little bit. I think it's just it's a little too optimistic right now. I mean, some of these markets are at all time highs. A lot of them are only, you know, seven or 10 companies, the big tech companies um, that are really driving that. So, well, great questions. Um, I don't see any others. Yeah, I think um, as far as just closing comments here, and then I'll wrap up, um, please get the handouts. Uh, click on that before we wrap up the webinar. And then if you want to um, set up a one-on-one -on -one with, with our team, uh, we'll be happy to, to chat with you. Um, from, a, from a client standpoint, um, you know, we're, we're cautiously optimistic going into next year. A lot of the investments that we have, those of you that are clients in, uh, we're actually very pleased with how they performed. We'll touch on that a little more in January. Um, but a lot of our private investments have given us, um, cash flow. They've given us tax benefits and they've given us appreciation this year. So that's three really good things to be thankful for. Um, we, we do not have as much in the stock market right now. Uh, we've got a lot in short-term fixed income. Uh, we do have a lot of <clears throat> what I call non-correlated investments. Um, our stock exposure, um, we're, we're going to reevaluate that. We've mainly been focusing on just some of the pro-values companies and some of those that have higher dividends um, on that. So, um, with that, overall, we're pretty pleased with the portfolio for the year. I think the markets uh, have kind of been all over the place. Uh, I do think financial gravity sets in and, and we see, you know, a meaningful market correction, you know, um, easily 10 to 15 percent um, as we get into the first quarter of next year. So uh, with that, I'm going to sign off. I want to thank everyone so much for um Supporting us, for those of you that we work with, thank you. It's been a pleasure to serve you in 2023. And uh, again, um, check us out on the Kingdom Finance Show. If you want to connect with us online, you can go to wealthbuilders.net. And then again, we do this every month. And um, we'll be in January joined by Billy Epperhart. We'll do kind of an overall macro outlook for 2024. Please sign up for that. Um, and we'll... we'll um, do a lot of Q&A on that call as well. Um, so with that, I want to wish everyone very happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Uh, be safe out there. And I hope you found this economic update uh, insightful. Again, we're going to continue to kind of watch how things fold with the economy and some of those key things that we talked about with interest rates on that. Uh, and at the end of the day, we want to be good stewards of our finances, of our gifts, of our companies, of our ministries. Uh, invest them wisely in ways that do not violate our biblical values, but also invest in a way that can make an impact, that we can feel good about the investments we're in, um, but also in a way that we can protect our money and grow it uh, with wisdom. So with that, thank you, everyone. Have a great Christmas season. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time. On behalf of Wealth Builders Investments and the Kingdom Finance Show, I want to thank you so much for being a part of today's program. Take care. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Kingdom Finance Show. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review. It really helps to get the word out. For more resources on becoming a kingdom investor and to connect with us directly, visit our website at wealthbuilders.net. That's wealthbuilders.net. We'll see you next time on the Kingdom Finance Show. The content provided is for educational purposes only. We encourage you to seek personalized investment advice from your financial professional. For all tax and legal advice, please consult your CPA or attorney. Investment advisory services are offered through Authentic Counsel, a registered investment advisor. Securities are offered through Cabin Securities, a registered broker-dealer. The content of this podcast does not constitute an offer of securities. Offerings can only be made through an offering memorandum, and you should carefully examine risk factors and other information contained in the memorandum.